This is the Diatone Crusader GT2. Diatone started out as a company that kind of cloned some other quadcopters and then they stepped out on their own with the Tyrant series and then now the Crusader series. And then this is the, the second version or the generation of the Crusader. Now one thing they did on here was they used the power distribution board and flight controller all in one and that allowed them to really bring this profile down of the uh, frame here. The top board in here is the video uh, transmitter which is connected back here to the antenna. Anyway, I got another video review about this frame, and this is actually a really awesome frame. So, of course, you know, Diatone having great, great success with this frame, it wasn't long until another company decided to make one that looked a lot like it. This is the real ACC Y200. Now, this comes in the uh, three different sizes, a 130, 160, and 200, and today I have a 200 to take a look at. And, yes, it looks a lot like the Crusader GT2. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the Y200, and this comes in a very, very nice Ziploc bag for packaging it up. <laughs> Let me get these pieces out of here, and we'll, we'll do some measurements on it. Now, one thing I was going to tell you about this is that it does come with a power distribution board, which is nice. That way you don't have to buy one separately. But it does use the one that uses the little XT60 connector and uh, solders into here. Now, there's nothing wrong with this type of connector. In fact, I actually really like these. The only problem I have with this is that when I hang it out the side and this is hanging down, I've actually bent this little part of the of the uh, of the power distribution board before, and I've actually had to disc, uh, disassemble my whole quadcopter and put it back together. But one reason I really like this is because it has the five volt output for your flight board. It also has a 12 volt output that you can use for your video transmitter and for your camera. So here are all the pieces laid out. The quadcopter frame itself has the holes, of course, for the battery strap. It also has the four holes for a 30 by 30 spaced uh, flight board. If you're trying to run the smaller one, the 20 by 20, you'll have to either drill your own holes or <laughs> get a different frame. It also has the holes out here for the uh, spacers so that you can put the uh, little um, side plates on. And here are these little pieces that come with this are metal and they go into the holes and then these side brackets mount into those things. So we'll take a little closer look at that in a minute. It also comes with this. This is designed to go in the back and hold your video transmitter antenna and it has this part that goes up on top with all the little holes in here to help strap your GoPro or whatever you have down to the frame. If you're going to use the included power distribution board that came with this, you're probably going to use these spacers to put on there and then you have to have another set of spacers to hold your flight board because it only comes with the four single spacers and the four nylon nuts. So the thickness on this frame it comes up to be about four millimeters thick. Four millimeters is pretty massive for this size of quadcopter. The Diatone Crusader however comes with a five millimeter main plate and it also has that nice glossy look to it. But on these arms, these arms are about 15 millimeters wide, so they, uh, they should have enough strength to hold up the most crashes. I've seen them a little bit thicker, I mean a little bit wider in some other quads, but being that it's 4 millimeters, if you, by cutting these a little bit thinner, they can get rid of a lot of extra weight that the frame then doesn't have to carry. This frame comes with two different metal size spacers. They look like this. This one has two, this one has one, and on this frame, this part back here is supposed to be the back. So on the back, that's where we want to put the spacer with just the uh, one hole. It'll go back here on the back with the uh, flat side to the inside. Also, if you look at this frame here, they got these little, it's grooved out right here to hold these in here a little bit tighter. So that way, as you're tightening the bottom screw, it's not going to spin this top piece around. But this goes back here, and this goes up here in the front. They're supposed to go to the, uh, like I said, the flat side goes to the inside, and then the side plates will mount to it. And somebody put TCMM on here and I'm not sure what that means. I've seen it before but this is a real ACC frame so I don't know who that is and it's not HK Thunda. So here's the frame fully assembled. One nice thing about this frame all the screws they included they're all the same length so you don't have to worry about grabbing the right screw or the wrong screw. There's uh, about eight extra screws and there's eight that hold this together. There's the two on this side, the two on this side that hold the top plate on and then the four down here that hold the main plate to the little metal spacers. And those little metal spacers are really nice because you're going to have a real hard time stripping them out because, you know, they're metal versus the nylon. And uh, so, yeah, a little bit stronger. Now you're going to need, you are going to need to have some uh, nylon spacers down here in the bottom if you're thinking about running your uh, power distribution board flat to the ground. You might be able to do it, but you need a little bit of room because of this battery strap that goes through here. And so, if I push it down, you might be able to squeeze it on with something like just a single um, nylon nut on the bottom for a spacer. 
but you're gonna have to do a little bit of games in here because you don't have a lot of room and if this is where the power distribution board goes right here you're gonna have another spacer with your flight board up on top of it so you're gonna be running a real short of room inside there let me go ahead and measure how much room there actually is in here it doesn't have a lot so you have about 18 millimeters of space inside there so like I said you don't have a lot, a lot of room but uh, hopefully if you're going to build this you're not going to use a power distribution board like this hopefully you're going to use a um, fly board where it has a power distribution board built into it that would save you quite a bit of space and leave room for your video transmitter because as soon as you stack your power distribution board and your fly board and they're going to fit a video transmitter inside here well you're going to be running real tight and especially if you're going to try to use a wire from the video transmitter to here you have wire running around inside there whole thing's going to get real tight real fast but i do like the look of this frame i do like the low profile the one thing i wish is that this wasn't quite so squared here i wish it was a little bit more rounded you know to give a little bit cooler look to it but you know i can't have everything i want also i didn't really understand why this top plate is rounded like this but then it has this little rounded piece inside here that kind of breaks up the roundedness of this and i didn't I don't, I don't know. Maybe if you're gonna if you're gonna use a HS 1177, hopefully you're gonna use these screw holes here. But you can already tell just from this that you're gonna be real tight up against that uh, camera there because those holes are just so close to where your flight board's gonna be. So you're gonna have some pretty good angle on your camera just because you won't be able to flatten it out, especially if you have a camera with the wires going into it in the bottom. You're, they're gonna enter. They're gonna they're going to fight with your uh, flight board and your power distribution board so you, when you look at those you may want to try to get one with it up on the top and hopefully that'll work a little better for you the crusader gt2 comes in about 95.5 grams this is an x210 the three millimeter frame with the pdb installed weighs about uh, 90.6 and the four millimeter weighs about 103.4 so let's go ahead and get this one on the scale and this is first we'll weigh it without the pdb comes in about 76.4 and that's important because I don't think everybody's going to use a PDB like this one that came with it because they may use the flight board with the PDB built into it but if we throw this PDB on top of here too it comes up to be about 88.3 grams so it's still well below the weights of the other frames that I was talking about they call this the Y200 and usually the 200 means that it's 200 millimeters between motor mounts well if I center the uh, zero here on this arm and I slide over this way you can see it's not even near 200 it's more like about 213 maybe maybe 212 so they should have called this a Y210 because it's a little big to be calling it a 200 so this is the Diatone Crusader GT2 and the Y200 you can tell they look a lot the same especially with their little low profile uh, canopies up on top now if I hold these up against each other or hold them both up here at the same time you can tell the Crusader has a lot lower profile than the um, Y200. Now the Crusader has, to, has this little metal piece on the bottom that holds your battery strap whereas on this one it goes through the actual main plate which is why you're going to lose a little bit of space inside there. Uh, this one also has a, a lot lower profile than this one, has a lot less meat on the sides than this one, than the Y200 does. And the camera sticks out quite a bit on this one, which is usually it's been okay for me because usually it just crashes and rolls and the camera's usually not impacted. This one gives a little bit more protection for the camera at the expense of just being a little bit larger. So this is the real ACC Y200 quadcopter. I think this is actually a pretty nice frame. I like the uh, I like the how the arms are pretty thin here, a 15 millimeters and four millimeter thick plate should make it plenty strong for crashes, especially if you're avoiding concrete walls or brick walls. The only thing, the only downside to this that I think is just how big this upper plate looks. But I think if you didn't have the Crusader sitting next to it, I think it would look a lot cooler. Just the Crusader just kind of <laughs> is so well designed. Anyway, this is the real ACC uh, Whites 200. If you have any questions about this frame, leave them in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.